general manager in football. This is not a well-kept secret necessarily, but today we are essentially firing Steve Keim. I'm taking over as armchair video game GM, and I'm also going to fire Cliff Kingsbury because he was not even qualified to coach Texas Tech, turns out. And I know what you're thinking. Who are you? Are you even qualified to do? No, I'm not. That's why I'm on the video game. Let's go ahead and talk about this roster and jump right into it. Realistic rebuild. You guys have been asking for it. And with the way things work in the NFL nowadays, I don't even know what realistic means. Anything goes seemingly in today's NFL. Also, I mean, not exactly a flattering angle of Cliff Kingsbury. He kind of just looks like Ryan Gosling got super high. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what the angle is. It's, I don't know. Is this not a ridiculous picture to anybody else? I don't know. I don't know where they found that. So the current fear is that Kyler Murray has suffered a season-ending knee or lower leg injury. Uh, I don't know if the report is actually out at the time of me recording this, although I can check. I can't find anything definitive, but I think the fear is that he has suffered a season-ending injury. And uh, I mean, you gotta look at the bright side. Plenty more time for Call of Duty. So pros and cons. And uh, Colt McCoy, I guess, will be our quarterback for this first season. But as I started at week 10 or so, did I not do that? Maybe you can only do that in online. All right, I'll load in at week 10, which I guess you can only do online. My big fear, though, is that because Madden is such a broken mess this year, and a lot of years, that uh, we won't even be able to advance it. I see that people are getting a lot of problems on Twitter right now. Don't love it. How do I load into week 10 and I have to cut nine players? How is that possible? How do they start us with uh, more players than are allowed on the active 53? How do we have 60 players? Is the practice squad broken? I don't know what's going on. Okay, so this will be the team. Some of these contracts are expiring. What's the biggest expiring contract of the Cardinals? Do I know offhand? We're going to find out in a minute. I think Justin Pugh is expiring. We're going to find out for certain in a minute. J.J. Watt, I believe, is expiring. But there are a number of really good players here that we can build with. This first season, we're not going to do anything. We're already Week 10. We're beyond the trade deadline. And we're, we're thinking about moving forward. We're not thinking about what has already been done. We know the Cardinals are 3-6. and six. Cardinals are not 3-6 and because we're not even in Week 10 in real life. We're in, like, Week 14 it's so dumb this year, man. Oh, it's so stupid. Anyway, let's look at it this way. So, uh, Rodney Hudson, looks like his contract is expiring. J.J. Watt, Byron Murphy is a free agent. That's right. Trayvon Mullen, who they brought in. I don't know why the Raiders just got rid of him. Maybe I was missing something with that. There are a number of big free agents. I would even consider Zach Allen to be a free agent. I'm a big fan of his game. I liked him at Boston College quite a bit. And I really think he's a good player for the Cardinals. Maybe not a superstar of yet, clearly, but I feel like he's definitely good. Kind of reminds me of the way Zach Sealer is appreciated throughout the NFL. Good player for the Dolphins, if you were not aware. But I don't think we're going to be doing anything uh, up to Week 10. The only thing I can really do is do what I do for every realistic rebuild, which is load in the 2023 NFL Draft Class. Been making some tweaks to it. You know, I, I would say I don't remember what I've done with any of the development traits for the most part or the overalls for the most part. I just know how I feel and about, you know, a lot of other people feel about these prospects. So I've tried to reflect that in the class. And it's more about, again, the story of rebuilding the team rather than drafting the best player in year one. I'm trying to target someone I think the Cardinals could actually be in on in the draft. And when I think about the Cardinals, I really think... Well, maybe halfbacks in play, but probably down the board, you'd hope. But obviously, Bijan, Jamir Gibbs at the top of that list. But I really think about the tackles and the offensive line in general. I think they could certainly be in play for one of the top tackles, and that's probably featuring Roderick Jones, Paris Johnson, Peter Skaronsky. And uh, if we feature the right tackles as well, maybe Dewan Jones could sneak in around one or round two probably will be a top 50 pick if I had to guess but tackle certainly in play and then you look defensively they have a number of needs I think edge would be in play you'd hope not linebacker although Steve Kaim loves to take them and then I think corner is absolutely in play as well so 
Uh, I'd probably think about drafting one of those players. Again, I'm trying to get somebody that the Cardinals would actually draft, but that is the class. Edge, maybe interior defensive line, depending on who's available, corner, and yeah, uh, tackle. But we will start by simulating to the offseason, making some moves in this offseason, whether it's free agency or the draft, but also especially re-signing players that we want to bring back. Zach Allen, Byron Murphy, probably not on J.J. Watt, probably not. We finished 6 and 11, 2022 season recap. The Bucks ended up making the Super Bowl, but the Jags end up winning it. Two fringe playoff teams end up going to the Super Bowl. That's wild, and especially the Jags winning it. Although Trevor Lawrence is starting to play some really, really good football. I think he was actually better than a lot of people think last year. If you actually watched the Jags drop after drop after drop after the offensive line, not being able to protect for even two seconds, it was tough. It was tough to watch. This year, less of that is happening, but he's, I think, taking a step up in his own evolution as well. Josh Allen won MVP. Damian Pierce, Rookie of the Year. Aiden Hutchinson on defense. And Cooper Cup, who's injured, actually wins Offensive Player of the Year. That happens pretty frequently. All right, so this is the big thing. We didn't really even talk about the team too much. Just kind of jumping straight into the offseason here. J.J. Watt's down to an 83 overall. Does not have interest in returning. But Byron Murphy is somebody I want to bring back. He doesn't really have a large interest in returning. So if I want to bring him back, I'd have to pay him a significant amount of money. But he's only 25. We do not have a lot of good corners on the roster. So we need to keep all that we do have. And Byron Murphy, I just might offer a very low-risk contract. But I'm comfortable having him for six years you know, about $10 million per year. I think this is a pretty good contract for us overall. We are overpaying, but hopefully we actually bring him back. And we do. Byron Murphy will stay a Cardinal. I want Trayvon Mullen, too. I think it's a decent cornerback duo. And based on his age and overall as well, I'd be comfortable with a very similar contract in length to what we gave to Byron Murphy. Brader can go. He's too old. AJ Green sent him to the retirement home. And then Zach Allen. It's too much. It's too much money. Over $7 million per year for a 76 overall, which I think should be a little bit higher. Normal development defensive lineman. It's just not good enough. It's not. And he does have interest in coming back, but at the same time, I don't really want to pay him that much money. It's just too much. I would be comfortable closer to like $6 mil per year, not... A whole lot more than that. I'll offer him this contract. I think he's going to decline it. And we're probably just going to have to go our separate ways. I'm not paying him like eight or nine mil a year. I just can't do that. I can't do it. Justin Pugh, bye. Will Hernandez for two years, I think I can deal with. I don't know if he's going to want to sign for that, though. Because, I mean, nobody has an interest in being here. It's kind of the big problem. I don't, I mean, do I want any of these players? Not really. Yeah, we're going to look toward free agency in the draft to improve our team. In free agency, it's the usual suspects. Tony Pollard could be an interesting fit. We certainly need a running back. He wants to start, which he would be able to on my team, of course. And he's not especially old. A three-year, maybe four-year deal? He wants five. No. I'd give you a four-year deal. A little over six per year. Four years, 24 and a half. I, it's not really that bad. Let's go ahead and offer Tony Pollard. Where does it put us in the race? Third. How much money do I really want to pay him, though? He's definitely good. How great is he? I think I could go as high as, like, 7 over 4. Maybe bump it up. It's a little over 4 years, 28. I think it puts us in a little bit of a better spot to potentially land him. Lowers us somehow. We're out on Tony Pollard, is essentially what that means. I'd really have to pay a running back a lot of money, and I don't want to do that. Don't necessarily need a tight end because we have... A decent young player, rookie in real life from Colorado State, who is quite the good player in Trey McBride, or at least you hope he can be long-term. Probably only as normal dev, but Irv Smith, I don't really think puts us in too much of a better spot. On the offensive line, 
we need to improve for sure. There's next to no interest from any of the potential options. Brian Bulaga is a Band-Aid. Jack Conklin, I don't think so. Maybe Brian Bulaga on like a one-year deal. It's not a lot of money. At least somebody would be playing there. Get some more players in rotation. Nate Davis is someone I would be comfortable paying a lot of money to. Really solid guard. Only 26 years old. Star development. I'd like to think that we could get Nate Davis. Although the Texans are going to pay him a ton of money. So Daryl Williams on a one-year contract is probably a better fit. I just don't love the options. That's what it comes down to. We're not getting better by bringing back J.J. Watt to be, you know, an 83 overall for one year and then retire. It doesn't really do anything for me long term. It really doesn't. And that kind of lands us back to Zach Allen, who, I mean, will offer. I'm going to pay him probably not quite as much as he wants, but hopefully he signs anyway. That's like a middle of the pack type offer. We'll see if that actually intrigues him enough. Isaiah Simmons will end up moving back to linebacker, so we're going to be fine there. I don't want to play him at strong safety. Uh, we already have a pretty good one in Buda Baker, obviously. I think that's actually fine for free agency. I'm targeting these five. Will we actually get any of them? I think we'll definitely get Bulaga and Williams right away, and we'll see about the others. Let's see. All right, they're all gone. We got Bulaga, Allen, and Williams right away. We lost out on Tony Pollard and Nate Davis, who went to the Texans. That's okay, though. Yeah, I'm not really going to offer anybody else in this cycle. I think we got the three players that will help our team out the most right now. Didn't really do much for long-term growth of this team, but we'll have a starting right guard. We'll have a starting right tackle. And we have DJ Humphreys at left tackle, which could be worse. Could be worse. So we need to improve the interior in the draft. And I'm still probably going to look to draft a tackle or something. It is possible that Josh Jones could start at right tackle for the future. That's not out of the question. He's 26 years old already, though. Kind of an older rookie. This is Lucita Smith. He, I want to say he played right tackle at Virginia Tech when I watched him. Maybe even right guard. Center. I mean, he certainly doesn't have ideal size at 6'3 to play tackle. Maybe he did play guard. Yeah, played left guard. I, I guess I just misremembered that. Move to center is not that crazy, though, given his size. Receiving core is pretty good. I mean, I don't really know what the Cardinals are doing. I know everyone... Seems to love Hollywood Brown for a first rounder. I didn't necessarily love the trade. I think Hollywood Brown is a good deep threat, good combo with Kyler Murray. I just don't know that you would have traded a first round pick for him. But when you see teams like the Bears trading a pick at the top of the second round for Chase Claypool, I guess it does look a little bit better based on the league at, uh, asking price. Rondo Moore, Nuke, great trio. This is a fine trio for our offense. The only real problem is DeAndre Hopkins is 31 and he's been stripped of superstar and or superstar X Factor because of his whole steroid action going on. Robbie Anderson has been like a non-factor. I know he had a couple of catches last week, but hadn't done anything prior to that. Zach Ertz, but really Trey McBride's going to be our guy. And then defensively, Isaiah Simmons will move back to linebacker. We're probably going to move to a 4-3 because it's going to be a little bit easier for me. Because we don't have to. But probably will. I don't know. Maybe not. All right. Isaiah Simmons back at linebacker. The defense is not good. I like the safeties. I think corner is in a better spot. The D-line is so bad. We need edge rusher badly. Cam Thomas I like as well. He's a good fit for a 3-4. Is he really listed at outside linebacker though? He could play 4-3 and he was a really fun player to watch at San Diego State. Moved inside and outside on the uh, defensive line quite a lot. We have flexibility there. I don't want to play him at 3-4 outside linebacker. That's not a fit. Not in my opinion. Yeah, we're going to end up in a 4-3 probably. We really, 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 I cannot emphasize this enough, need a help in the front seven on defense. It's not inside linebacker. We're fine. And Zayvon Collins probably does move outside and I'll keep... Isaiah Simmons is like a mic, 
but I need edge. I need the interior of the defensive line. It is a bad, bad, bad front. I think the corners would look a whole lot better if the defensive line actually was pretty good. Seahawks end up with the number one overall pick courtesy of the Denver Broncos, and they take a defensive end at Tyree Wilson out of Texas Tech. That is early, but he is a pretty good player. It's not it's not that early, but it's just kind of funny to see the Seahawks really embrace Geno Smith in this uh, narrative. Will Anderson goes to the Falcons at three. Steelers take Broderick Jones. Commanders at five really go with Bryce Young. The Raiders take Jalen Carter, who probably won't make it to six, but I guess could. And here we are at number seven. Miles Murphy is the guy. Brian Brzee wouldn't be bad. I mean, we really have our pick here of what we want, but Miles Murphy is going to be the guy for me. Another inside-outside style of player. He would fit in a 3-4 or a 4-3 on the outside. I like Miles Murphy. I really, really do. He is one of the probable top six or seven players in the entire draft. Has been a beast on that Clemson Tiger defense, and we will be drafting him here with the seventh overall pick. Let's welcome Miles Murphy. 90 strength is quite a lot. 81 speed, 81 acceleration. The class still needs tinkering with. But uh, yeah, Miles Murphy, welcome to the Arizona Cardinals. I feel like it's a pretty good first pick for us. It's a pretty deep edge class. But when you can get maybe the best one outside of Will Anderson Jr. as a prospect, and they're different style of prospects, but I think you'd do that. I think that was the right call. We'll have to take Lucas Van Ness out of the... Uh, draft class. He seems like he's staying at Iowa this next season. And we have some pretty good picks here. Clark Phillips to be a slot corner would be really, really good. Javon Dexter would also be a pretty good pick. Help out the interior of our, of our defensive line. He's a fringe first round guy anyway. We can go a lot of different directions here. Tackle, certainly in play. Anton Harrison on the board, not bad. And it kind of thins out a little bit after that. Do we need tackle as much? Kind of. I really want a bunch of these uh, different players. I think a lot of these guys would be really good fits for us. What direction do we go? I'm really tempted to take a tackle. It's, it's funny the way they actually move the draft board around. Like Jared Verse goes down 69 spots. Well... I don't, I don't know what's going on. That can't be true. I, I don't know what these numbers are. <laughs> um, let's go ahead and take... Let's go Anton Harrison. We're going to take a tackle. Probably will end up playing right tackle for us. Welcome to the Cardinals. Was hoping for star better development. Did not get it. But he will be our starting right tackle. Maybe not this year. But I would say certainly next. We'll go to round three. Bunch of good corners still available. These are guys that could honestly sneak into round one or round two. DJ Turner, Devin Witherspoon, Garrett Williams, all really good cornerback prospects. And we do need corner. I think, I want to say Cedric Von Prahn is going back as well. I do think that's true. Uh, running back, Tank Bigsby, Zach Evans. There's good value here. It feels like a pretty good draft class. And I'm going to take... Oh, I don't know. I really don't know. <laughs> Thought I would just find a decision by just saying that. Nick Herbig could be a good fit. I don't know why Nick is censored. He has been very productive. I'm going to go corner. I'm going to go corner for sure. And we're going to take number one on the board. We're going to go Garrett Williams. He's good. Real good athlete. Honestly, if he didn't get injured for Syracuse this past season... Maybe he ends up being a first-round pick. Who knows? But good value here in the third round. Round four. Brandon Joseph being available is still quite good for us. We could try and complete our linebacking core. Go Diane Henley. Was great for Washington State this past year. Really moved up boards quite a bit. And that would pretty much totally offer us a, a switch into a 4-3. Justin Jacobs actually is going to be staying in college, just transferred to Oregon, so I have to take him out next time I go through this. But I think we're going to go ahead and take Diane Henley. This is probably around the range where you should be taking linebackers, not really at the top of the first round all the time. But I like Isaiah Simmons as a prospect. Zayvon Collins is pretty good. 
Um, but Diane Henley here in the fourth round, I like a lot more than that. Good value, good athlete, good potential. And yeah, completes our linebacking trio. I don't know what happened, but I did not change Jaron Hall to be a receiver in this draft class. There's a reason he's got F everything. I did not change Jaron Hall to be a receiver. He's BYU's quarterback. What? How did that even happen? Let's go Keanu Benton. Yeah, I got to go through and, and see who is actually declared for the draft and who is not uh, in cases where it's important. But Keanu Benton is my last pick of this 2023 NFL draft. There goes Jake Hayner, tried to advance to the end. Keanu Benton did enter the NFL draft, by the way, in case you were curious. We have trade offers. Robbie Anderson. Uh, I'm listening. I know this is a realistic rebuild, but we could flip him to somebody else if it makes sense. Chuba Hubbard's not bad, because we do need running back. Bernard Ryman. I don't love my options here. I'll be frank about that. Adrian Phillips doesn't offer us much. I mean, neither does Chuba Hubbard, Keith Taylor, Gavin Heslop, to be fair. Is it Gavin? I think it is. I don't know. Don't really love any of these. DJ Chark, probably the best true offer. Don't think the Giants will be wanting to trade Wandale. I'll probably just hold on to him. So we got a little bit better overall, I would say. Really focused on the defense in this draft. And as I mentioned, we are going to be changing to a 4-3 here. I think corner is solidified for the future. We already like safety. Linebacker should be done with with Diane Henley, who is a 71, and Miles Murphy, who is a 77, who will stay at a 77 when we switch to a 4-3. Zach Allen will move inside. Uh, Myjay Sanders will move down. Jesse Lucada will probably keep it outside linebacker. Demu KJ will move down. Cam Thomas will move down. And yeah, I think that's probably it. This is our defense. It's in a better spot. Isaiah Simmons has actually moved outside linebacker where he's a scheme fit to keep Zayvon Collins as a scheme fit so we can get XP faster. I need a kicker and punter. I'll be signing those in free agency here. It doesn't really particularly matter who we have. Isaiah Simmons is not going to be a rush end. He was super effective as a pass rusher at Clemson because he wasn't really a pass rusher. He was like a just a a blitzer when they overloaded the box. Um, but he, he's not like an edge rusher. Does have decent power and finesse moves for a linebacker though. But I do not want him as a down lineman. I do not want him as a rush end. So we're probably going to play either Dennis Gardeck or Cam Thomas in that spot. Probably get a Dennis Gardeck. And Simmons will be a sub linebacker. I'm sure I'm going to have to rearrange that um, after after uh, training camp and preseason anyway. So we'll just go ahead and advance to the regular season. Sign my kicker and punter, and then I'll change around the depth chart and see you guys at the midseason mark. Okay, midseason mark. We'll see what happens. Zach Ertz is going to still be pretty productive. We're in KC offensive playbook now. Could rock Trey McBride in that spot, but he's just not near as good. Although, if I'm focused on the future and development, maybe it would be a better idea to make that change. So I think I will do that. Although it is important to remember, we are still bad. So I don't really know what you'd expect in terms of a winning season and record in this in this particular year. I don't think we're going to be that good. Should take a bit of a step up, but also you have to factor in that we started at week 10 and we ended up with six wins. So I don't know if you can even extrapolate any number because we've changed offensive and defensive playbooks and... We have to play the entire season in simulation rather than having the first 10 weeks set in stone already. But we are three and four in a position to potentially win the NFC West, to be honest. But I'm really interested on seeing this draft class. Quarterback is obviously taken care of, but we could still take offensive tackle. We could still take edge rusher. We could still take a number of different things. I think corner is in a good spot, so probably not corner, but any edge rusher, any interior defensive lineman, any offensive lineman, really. Any running back. Do you think this class has a lot of field generals or what? Only every quarterback. Every quarterback's just the game manager type. Man, what a terrible athlete. All right. A catching's interesting on Enrique Bailey. Receiving back. 
I don't know. I don't know that I've seen... I've probably seen A catching at some point. Pretty good athlete. Probably not going to draft a running back that high. But if I can trade back into the first round and grab one, I suppose it's on the table. I'll say I like the look of some of these linebackers down the board. Like... Chris Turner here from Clemson reminds me a lot of John Boston Giants franchise. And the same thing with Jalen Sneed down the board here as well. You see A zone coverage, A pursuit. It's a pretty good combo. Great to elite speed and acceleration. Not really that great of a linebacker, but this is good value down the board. And I'll probably going to be, I'd be hard pressed to pass on those guys. A speed rush outside linebacker, 6'5", 257, with great to elite speed and acceleration is intriguing to me. Now, only B finesse moves. I don't love that. Really wish it was A. We'd be looking at a real top-of-the-line prospect, but they are a good prospect nonetheless. Donnell Kelly, who's a top-five guy, I don't think is quite as good. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe tackles weighted in heavily. Not as good of an athlete. See a couple defensive tackles that I like, though. Hollywood Brown's going to be free agent. Robbie Anderson... Maybe we should have traded him, but I want to keep things on the up and up, on the super straight and narrow, no questionable moves whatsoever, everything within the scope and realm of realism. And I am going to re-sign Robbie Anderson. I'm going to re-sign Isaiah Simmons. It's a fine contract. Isaiah Simmons returns. And I think Hollywood Brown will be back as well. Only 26 years old. Great player to have in Madden. He is super expensive, but will probably end up being our highest rated receiver in a year or two. Not considering shorter. I gave you an extra year. Okay. Probably not going to offer anybody else. We'll get Hollywood Brown back. It's not something I'm super focused on right now. And uh, if they still want to trade for Robbie Anderson, we're not really a competing team. Saw a lot of trades go down at the trade deadline this past year. I will potentially consider a trade... Bilal Nichols makes sense to me. That feels like a good fit. And that's actually going to be the one I do. Let's go ahead and get Bilal Nichols from the Raiders. We could stand to improve the interior of our, of our defensive line. He would move to defensive tackle for me. And I maybe shouldn't have done that trade because it's going to rearrange my entire depth chart now. And it has. Yep. And Bilal Nichols also has star development. This is a good pickup for us. It really is. He is only 26 years old, star dev, probably will go up at defensive tackle, which is a way more natural fit for him here in my 4-3 defense than defensive end, obviously. So he might even go up to 77 overall, 75. 77 was a stretch. I thought he was like, I thought he was 75 already, but I guess the morale boosts were not as big as I thought. Uh, but that's a good fit for us. That's a starting interior defensive lineman. It's definitely good. Miles Murphy also, superstar dev. Love to see that. Strengths of this class, right tackle, defensive tackle, corner. So I think I'll just leave it as is. Seems like we have the perfect area scout. And um, I got to make his super focus. Let's do... Let's do... Defensive tackle. No. Yeah, offensive tackle. Yeah, I'm going to change it. And we would not make the playoffs. 5-12 and 12 is our final record here. Anthony Richardson set the league on fire, by the way. What happened? We were three and four. Well, clearly we lost a lot. From week six, that is 0-1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We, went, we had an 0-10 streak. And then, wow, two wins to finish against the Giants and Lions. What an end to this amazing season. Kyler Murray had a good season, though. This could end up getting him some MVP votes and maybe even move him up to Superstar X Factor. It's going to be great for his overall development. He is already looking pretty good. I'm surprised his deep accuracy is not higher, though. James Conner, and I, I know that's not really... I, I don't mean... Okay, so like I know the Cardinals have like the fewest big plays. They might have like one 30-yard air play on the year. Um, but Kyler Murray, I don't think that is much to his effectiveness as a downfield passer or or accuracy rather i just think it's the offense anyway james connor was pretty good got way too many touches but wasn't productive i don't know that's fine receiving hollywood brown led the way 13 touchdowns for hopkins though 11 for rondell moore our receivers got it done this is amazing production 
And then Isaiah Simmons had a billion tackles, four for loss, 16 for loss for Zach Allen, 11 for Gardeck, who put up eight sacks, which led the team. Six and a half for Miles Murphy, and then three picks for Buda Baker led the team, and we barely forced any turnovers. Ravens beat the Panthers in the Super Bowl, and Lamar not only wins Super Bowl MVP, but league MVP. Jackson Smith and Jigba of the Seahawks wins Offensive Rookie of the Year, and they also have the Defensive Rookie of the Year with Tyree Wilson. Making the most of their multiple first-round picks, what a season for the Seahawks and especially the Ravens. What a season for bird teams. Great to be a bird right now. Oh, unless you're the Cardinals. I'm the Card. Okay, yeah. Unless that one obvious exception. Kyler Murray did not move up in dev trait. Zach Ertz is regressing. What do we need here? I mean, DeAndre Hopkins is regressing also. Still need offensive line. And then defensively, Diane Henley ends up having star dev. We need edge rusher still. I could also still see myself taking a defensive tackle. Zach Allen could just slide over, or we could just have a rotation of defensive tackles going. Linebacker, I think, is, is pretty good, but we could look to upgrade over Henley with one of those second or third round running backs, or third round linebackers, excuse me, and running back. It's something I'm considering. Did I re-sign Hollywood? I don't think so. I think he's still going to be sitting here. All right, last chance to negotiate. I will just give him a low-risk contract. Bring him back. It's so much money, but we do have it, and he's going to be really good for us. So I'm going to keep Hollywood in town. Steve Kime traded a first-round pick for him. There, were, there was a little bit more going on than just a first-round swap for, uh, for Hollywood. Yeah, that, that's pretty much all I'm going to do. Daryl Williams is fine. One-year deal just to have somebody there. He returns. Could we swap Oklahoma quarterbacks? <laughs> Probably no need. Although, when Cliff took over and they moved on from their previous year's first-round pick quarterback and Josh Rosen, where Kyler Murray ended up being the right decision for them, uh, I don't really think a lot of people saw that one coming. But they did it. Uh, running back, probably going to pass here. Antonio Gibson would love to be an Arizona Cardinal. Apparently, Glendale's a huge market. I know it's Phoenix. It's a, it's a pretty big market, I guess. I don't. I wouldn't say it's, like, super big. Do I really need Antonio Gibson? If I can get him on a, a really cheap contract, yes. That would be a great pickup. Otherwise, don't really care, but no one else is going after him, so I think we're fine there. Receiver? Probably not. Tight end? Not this bunch. Tackle, Jedrick Wills will be a Cardinal. And he was actually close to being a Cardinal, I feel, in real life in his draft class. But like that was a matchup that made a ton of sense. They opted to go a different direction, though, clearly. They're going after Jed Wills, Antonio Gibson, and Kevin Dotson. Feels like this would be a pretty good class for us. Defensively, I think we're going to solve some of our problems in the draft. And offensively, it's really just the offensive line and solidifying... That, with these signings, I think would be the correct decision. And we have probably signed both of them. Jed Wills and Kevin Dotson, welcome to Arizona. Now, we did draft Anton Harrison a year ago, but Jed Wills is just better. And he was a second-round pick. No guarantee that you're ever going to be a starting tackle just because you're a second-rounder. I mean, look at uh, Walker Little of the Jaguars, right? Now, they're not necessarily going out and signing a tackle, per se. But this, this is the right move for us, 100%. We still need a center so that Lasita Smith is not starting. Daryl Williams is fine. I still might draft a guard. We don't necessarily need tackle anymore. That's for sure. TJ Humphreys and Jed Wills, I feel like it's a pretty good duo. But interior, yeah. And we could also draft a tackle to move inside a guard if they profile uh, as such. But I think our first pick should be an edge rusher. Things could change, but that would, that would be my bet at the moment. NFL draft time. We actually have the second overall pick in the draft. Not going to trade up for number one. And it is a quarterback, Patrick Moreland for Marshall. I don't think I looked at quarterbacks at all in this class. But we were not going to take one anyway, obviously. And we're not going to take tackle either, even though I think there are some pretty good ones in this class. Like John Taylor is... Really intriguing as a prospect. Elite change of direction and strength with really good skills. If we needed to tackle, he would be the pick here. However, at 6'6", 320, I could move him to guard. For sure. Definitely big enough to play on the inside. 
I just, um, or that's, is that Seth Donald? Who was the other guy? He was 6'6", 320. John Taylor is actually even better if it is 6'4", 328 for guard. Do I go with the most boring pick here and take a guard? I mean, I might. Carlos Knighton, I used my full scouting points on. Round one talent. I think this was the really good athlete though, right? Still very, very high on my board despite not being a top five talent in this class. I didn't think he would be because he only has B finesse moves. But that's okay. I think I did it on the center as well, up to 90%. And then Jordan Jones was the other one. Real interesting. 6'2", 256. A finesse moves, a tackle. Really solid overall athlete. D block shedding is a bit of a problem. But I think we're actually going to go with the shock offensive line pickup and then potentially trade back up for an edge rusher. So this is a tackle that we're going to be playing at guard, but he just looks too good to pass on, I would say. Elite athlete overall with great key ratings. We're going to take him. Hidden Dev, 93 strength, 74 acceleration. Looks pretty good to me. Feels like a plug-and-play right guard, and our offensive line pretty much come together. Donnell Kelly. Still not any of the edge rushers I'm interested in. Really have Carlos Knighton up near the top and Jordan Jones. I think I'd be comfortable with either. I really do. Because C block shed is for an outside linebacker. Who's to say that D block shed is not a little bit higher for a defensive end? But I don't know. It might not be. Um, we could take a center, but there was an offensive lineman. I think we could just end up playing at center down the board. Maybe Chris Gates could slide over. Great pass protector. Uh, could go defensive tackle. I'd love to trade back into the first round. I, I think it's just going to be whoever goes first. I'll trade up and get the other one. But there's no telling that I'm guaranteed to move up either. So I don't know for sure. Okay, making a trade. Trading a first round pick next year, as well as a third round pick this year and a seventh this year. And we are acquiring from the Vikings. Number 13 as well as number 45. 45, we might end up trading. Might not, kind of depends. But at 13, we have our pick between the two edge rushers. And it's just, which one do I prefer? Carlos Knighton or Jordan Jones? It's a tough call. I mean, I don't know that we can go wrong with either. Jordan Jones looks really good. The only thing kind of uh, making me steer a different direction is the D block shed. Everything else looks pretty good. And Carlos Knighton is also a little bit bigger. 6'5", 257. Feel like maybe a slightly better fit at defensive end. Well, you've seen some smaller defensive ends all time. Like Dwight Freeney was only about, you know, six foot or six one. So you don't have to be, you know, the 6'4", 6'5", freak to be able to play the position well if you're quick enough. Freeney was 6'1", 268. Um, the other one was a little bit lighter. 6'5", 257, 22 years old. I really don't think we can go wrong with either. They're both good. How old is Jordan Jones? 22 as well. I mean, they're not going to make this easy for me. I'm going to go Carlos Knighton. We know he's a round one talent for a fact. Welcome to the team. 86 speed, 91 acceleration is ridiculous. It was going to be too tough to choose. So I just took the top guy available that we know the most about. They were about the same speed and strength and i don't know man it was it was going to be a really tough decision either way we'll compare in the draft recap to see which you know was the actual best player who i would have preferred and we're going to slide our guy down to right end anyway graham cereals is still on the board oh my goodness but so is this running back that i was interested in or is that a different one that's a different one the running back is gone uh, this is just the most obvious pickup in the world i think Starting center, looks really good. The only thing that could stand in the way of that is if we wanted to go Percy Silver at a UNC. A finesse moves, A tackle, A to C block shed, really, really good athlete. It's just, what do I prefer? We just traded for a defensive tackle. We don't necessarily need one. We could draft a starting center. It is the better decision. We pick again at number 13 in the second round. But this absolutely, without question, has to be the Penn State center, Graham Searles, I'm going to call him. Welcome to the team. Or Searles? I don't know. He's got 87 strength, 82 acceleration, 70 speed. Feels like a good pickup to me. How far down is this defensive tackle? I mean, he definitely could be available. Might not be. 
It's not the end of the world because we don't necessarily need that player, but it would be a nice pickup. It wasn't the pick before. Certainly could be here. Would it even be the right pick if he is here? He is still available. I want one of these linebackers. I really do. We could trade back up for sure. It's not moving up a ton. And especially, it probably would be for Jalen Snead. I'm going to go Percy Silver. I mean, why overthink this? He is available. The only other scenario would be trading down to accumulate extra picks to trade back up or take one of their, those linebackers. But Percy Silver is my pick right now. Hidden Dev, 90 strength, 76 speed, 86 acceleration. Not bad athletically. Only 21 years old as well. 6'3", 303. Feels like a pretty good pickup. Okay, so which of these linebackers do I want the most? Chris Turner will be the toughest to get because we'd have to move up the furthest. He's 23 years old. Really good athlete. Elite speed of 451. Usually don't see them that fast with uh, outside linebacker. Usually it's only the inside linebackers that run that fast with elite speed. So Chris Turner looks like a very special athlete. And then Jalen Sneed. His elite, look at this, his elite speed is way slower. Do you see that 4.65 compared to like 4.5 flat? Okay. I, I'm going to really consider moving up all the way for Chris Turner. This could absolutely be a starting, yeah, a starting linebacker for us over Diane Henley. I think it has to be done and I'm going to have to trade up soon. He might not even make it out of the second round. Okay, we're trading a 4 and a 5 this year and a 3 next year for number 49. I know we're moving a lot of our picks here, but it really just feels like the right decision to go out and get players that we know are going to be difference makers for our team. There's no point to just have picks to have picks. So in a way, I kind of respect what the Rams have done historically, which is trade their picks for well-known, which I guess doesn't matter, but established talents. They know that they're some of the best players in the league. When you look at trading for Von Miller, trading for Jalen Ramsey, there's so many top of the line players that they've made, uh, made trades for. And Chris Turner is one of those guys that hopefully we found in the draft by trading picks. 89 speed, 89 acceleration, 88 agility, all phenomenal for a linebacker. And change of direction is not too bad either. I think he's going to end up being a starting outside linebacker for us this year. Draft recap. Let's see what we deal with here. So, overall, a good class. John Taylor's a 73. That's fine. Carlos Knighton, he might even go up to a 74, 75 at guard, too. Probably 74. Carlos Knighton is a 75. Don't hate this. 86 speed, 91 acceleration, we know, but 76 finesse moves, 69 block shed. Is the other defensive end going to be rated a lot higher? I don't think so. Cyril's is a 74. Silver is a 73, and Chris Turner is a 73, which may be higher than Diane Henley right now. Exceptional speed, coverage is good, tackle pursuit could be better, block shedding is not great, but I see a starting outside linebacker right now. Let's see the rest of the class. So, man, a safety. <sighs> safety was an 81 overall. Darren Cager from Auburn. 99 hit power. Okay, well, he might be the like tier one generated which is the very very top of the line before generational but i could also see superstar x factor generational hit power which is maybe what we found here didn't draft him of course because it wasn't a need but 81 overall is pretty good 99 hit power and jordan jones looks to have been the right decision unless he has normal dev now it's a question now it's a question he's a 77 overall 81 finesse moves is better than what we have Block shedding is up three to a 70, but it would be a 67 otherwise. I don't know. Would you prefer a 77 overall with normal development or a 75 overall with hidden? I think I'd prefer the hidden. Probably will be star, but it might not be. I don't ever check, but we are just going to move in and change him to right end. He's going to start either way because he has you know, a way higher ceiling, if you will. Let's give him five. Kind of sweet. Uh, way higher ceiling than, you know, Dennis Gardeck would. And John Taylor does go up to a 75 overall at right guard, by the way. So not bad. I think we have new starters at a lot of different positions. So we killed the draft, in my opinion. He does look really, really good, though. Cyril's does. Haven't checked out the guard yet. But super well-rounded. Good power in general. Pretty good for a center. And then John Taylor actually playing up to a 77. Doesn't look quite as good. 
but I think it's like the high athletic ratings, like 93 strength kind of leading his overall up a bit. 85 impact block and lead block are quite high though. So offense looks pretty good. Antonio Gibson is a nice one-two punch with James Conner. We have our receiving back, clearly Antonio Gibson, and the power back, James Conner. Should be a really good fit. And then defensively, Turner is going to start. Our defense looks pretty good overall. I like it. It's just about development at this point, and hopefully we get lucky with some dev traits. Silver, can't really justify starting him based on his overall. And then specialist-wise, yeah, Knighton's going to start. Silver could be a rush D tackle. I like that. Murphy and then Simmons, Collins. Yeah, this is perfect. Well, the NFC West is stacked right now. The Rams are 5-1, and one, Niners 5-2, and two, Seahawks 4-3, and three, and we are also 4-3. and three. But again, I'd like to say in good position to potentially win this division, but I said that last year and we were bad. Breakout linebacker trait, though. Isaiah Simmons? Zayvon Collins, okay. If he has another great game against the Vikings, he would go up to superstar dev, so let's hope for that. Cyril's and Taylor both have star dev, but hopefully we got lucky on defense. And Knighton has star, so we're just hoping for Turner to have better than star, otherwise a full star dev class. Silver, I guess, could have potentially better as well, but we need to make a better push here and make the playoffs, man. It's time. What is this? Technically year three technically right but really year two we do improve but we don't make the playoffs again nine and eight but it is improvement it's a process you gotta undo the deeds of the previous organization kyler murray still uh, very effective interceptions 15 just a little bit too many for my liking antonio gibson was pretty good but overall the backfield took a step back unfortunately receiving deandre hopkins was great 10 touchdowns for zach Ertz, and I mean, it still looks like it's a pretty productive uh, year for the offense. Say Simmons and Zayvon Collins with a ton of tackles, both four for loss. Not that many, and three and a half sacks. Very similar numbers. Miles Murphy took a huge step up. 13 for loss, 11 sacks. 11 tackles for loss, and nine and a half sacks for Carlos Knight. And that is a great rookie year. And Zach Allen had seven and a half sacks. Not too bad. Knight and I could see potentially going up to superstar. It's a really good year. I think we found... Our stud edge rusher, Trayvon Mullen, had six picks. Isaiah Simmons with four. Number of other players with one and two. And the Rams actually made it back to the Super Bowl and got killed by the Colts. <laughs> wow. NFL MVP was Eagles quarterback Tyler Van Dyke. Interesting. Carlos Knighton won Defensive Rookie of the Year, though. Very nice. Players ready to negotiate are... Buda Baker, DeAndre Hopkins, wow, a bunch of really impactful free agents here. Probably gonna get, uh, gonna let Zach Ertz walk and James Conner. Zach Allen, I'm in between on. We'll bring back Zayvon Collins. Let's stop talking about it. Let's do it. Buda Baker, this seems like a fair contract. He's interested in the team, and Buda Baker is back. DeAndre Hopkins also with interest. We're gonna lose money, uh, and we're gonna run out of money quickly, I should say. If we keep offering these 20 million per year deals, Rondell Moore might have to leave as a result. We don't really need to be giving him like 10 million a year. I'll take it down a little bit. If he accepts this, okay, Rondell Moore is going to be back. So we got it to be a little bit cheaper. Zayvon Collins, really not all that expensive. We still have a little bit of money in free agency. Not sure what direction I would go. Might let Bilal Nichols walk. I think we will with the defensive tackle we drafted. Just want to check his dev trait real quick, but I think we're going to let Bilal Nichols go. No dev trait changes on offense. And then defensively, Knighton does go up to superstar. Okay, because he won defensive rookie of the year. That makes a ton of sense. Huge get for us. So I would say Edge is no longer even a position of need on this team. Let's do run stopper because the CPU is going to upgrade speed rusher by default. So we'll just try and get block shed now. Plus three. Big addition, big upgrade. Trayvon Mullen goes up to superstar. Turner had star, Silver had star, but yeah, I think Bilal Nichols is gonna go. Doesn't really make sense to pay him. And in free agency, we need a kicker, we need a punter. Jalen Waddles here. Kinda wish I didn't pay Rondell more because this seems like a really good fit. But what do I actually need though? Offensive line's good. We could get better at tight end. Running back, still in play probably, but I don't think I'm gonna go that route. And then, ooh, did I not bring back Zach Allen? So uh, interior defensive line becomes a need again. Okay, 
Zach Allen wants to come back. We could just do that. Yeah, let's let's bring back Zach Allen. Two year deal. You know what? Aaron Jones would be a huge upgrade and could be really our main running back now that we no longer have James Conner. He is interested in the team. Everyone wants to play for the Cardinals now because we have the franchise quarterback tag for Kyler Murray. In fact, let's go ahead and take the money down on AJ here. And hopefully we can bring him in. I think that's a pretty fair offer. And we'll see if we can bring in Zach Allen and Aaron Jones. We should be able to get at least Zach Allen. We do. But now the Commanders and Rams are going after Aaron Jones. We might just have to go to a, a low-risk offer. And we did actually get Aaron Jones. We were not favored to get him. It's just a huge upgrade at the position. It was kind of like the one real flaw with our team. As you can see by our available salary cap, it really isn't even a concern right now. We're going to have that rollover next year as well. We're just in a really good spot overall. This is the window where we really should be competing for not only our first playoff berth, but I think a Super Bowl. We are into the mid-80s for overall. That should only go up as we continue to improve. A lot of young talent on this team. So let's make the most of our draft picks, which there aren't a lot of top ones, which is fine. And we'll see if we can develop the talent we have. The only thing we could really look to get better at is tight end. I like where our team is. I mean, maybe defensive tackle, certainly possible, but I like the team overall. I'm not really uh, in a bad position. Miles Murphy has been a pretty good player for us. Kicker and punter is definitely something I will consider drafting. But I think uh could still target somebody in free agency that's available. They always have good ones available uh, after the draft, so I'm not really too worried about it. Although this linebacker with A-zone coverage looks very good. Funny, all these kickers have power archetype, and then you actually check what their power is, and it's like, this is the best one by a mile. Good. Most of them were either poor or marginal. So maybe this is the kicker we draft, Easton K. Running back looks pretty good, too. You don't necessarily need running back, but I just think that might be the best player available. All right, let's go Dwight Strickland. Welcome to the team. Normal dev, 90 plus in acceleration, agility, change of direction, and speed though, of course. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, there's not much we could really find in the draft right now that's going to change our team too much. Let's take the fastest tight end, Stanley Ross. I, again, I'm not really sure what we're going to draft here that's going to change things. Let's see what time... Oh, okay. Well, Dwight Strickland was a 78 overall, despite being... Only normal development was a really, really good pickup for us. But let's see what type of talent we missed out on by not having that top end first round pick. And there was a very good player, maybe even two, into the 80s. 81 overall running back that went top 10 and 82 overall corner that went very high in the draft. 97 speed. Man and zone both into the 80s. Press not far behind. Yeah, it looks to be a really, really good corner. And even anything like into the mid to high 70s is pretty good. Really good looking receiver. Obviously our running back we drafted. Getting a top five player in the draft at that spot, pretty exceptional, I think. Offense should be great this year. Don't let me down. Really should be great. And the defensively, I, I'm still really a big fan of the way this team looks. We could use a fourth corner, maybe some depth at a couple of positions, linebacker, safety. And uh, I didn't take that kicker, um, which maybe was a mistake, but there's going to be a better one here in free agency anyway. So we'll take Logan Cook to be our starting punter. We have more than enough money. Ramondre Stevenson is available too. Could have gone in that direction. And Matt Gay has been our kicker, so we'll probably just bring him back. Although Greg Olson was a kicker I actually, I think, briefly looked at. Maybe I looked at somebody else. Let's bring him in. There's just so much talent in here. Like David Long Jr. still being available. It's auto instant signing. Got to bring him in. And Emmanuel mostly as well. Now we have like four or five good corners. Miles Murphy's developing nicely. I really think we've put together a pretty good team. This was our uh, top 10 pick, of course. It's wearing number 71, which is kind of gross. But we're going to leave it. Seems like he's done well enough with that number so far in this Cardinals rebuild. This should be, and I emphasize should be, who knows, but I, it should be the first season that we make the playoffs. It's the third season that we actually have control of the team. Looks like Percy Silver is going to be a pretty good player for us. Murphy and Carlos Knighton as rush ends. Our sub linebacker, Isaiah Simmons, Avon Collins, wouldn't want it any other way. This is what I wanted to see. Five and one comfortably in the division lead here in the NFC West. Love to see it. 
And it's a long time coming, right? We've been building this team. I think we finally built it to where, you know, we're in a position to succeed and in a position to be really effective. I think upgrading Improviser could be big for Kyler Murray. I don't really like that they're upgrading Scrambler. Plus one throw power is not bad. 91 throw power, but his deep accuracy has not changed the entirety of this rebuild, which is so frustrating. We're going to do... We'll do zone for Trayvon Mullen. I want to make him a little bit more balanced. Slot, never a bad idea, but I wanted the zone coverage boost. It was just too low. 89 man's great. 79 man, not so much. And that's after a plus two boost. But this should be a playoff team. Five and one start. This would be some type of implosion. That being said, we've seen it from the Cardinals before. Sorry. And we end up going 10 and seven and barely sneaking into the playoffs. I mean, to be fair, the next highest in the NFC West only won eight games. But man, why are we falling apart like this in the second half? I don't understand it. Murray was great, but again, too many interceptions for my liking at 16, but 45 touchdowns to almost 4,700 yards. You're not going to complain about that generally. Aaron Jones is pretty good. It would like a little bit more per carry than 4.1. DeAndre Hopkins was incredible. 21 touchdowns, over 1,000 yards for Trey McBride in a breakout season. Hollywood Brown was okay. Rondell Moore was okay. We're, and we're paying for them to be better than okay. But I get it. Nuke goes off. There's only so many yards to go around. Isaiah Simmons, again, very good for counting stats. 142 tackles, 12 for loss, one and a half sacks, four picks. That's a defensive player of the year type performance. Carlos Knight, 18 for loss, 13 for silver. Allen, 12 for Simmons, 11 for Miles Murphy. Miles Murphy leads the team in sacks with eight and a half, seven and a half for silver, six for Knighton. Not really a ton of pressure on the quarterback, or at least didn't show it in terms of sack production, but overall a good performance from our team. And where did we rank? Number 15 offense, number nine defense. Why is our offense so bad? Heck of a question. It's not so bad, but it's not, it's not like great, and we should be. Wild card round of the playoffs. The Giants are really good up to this point. 86 overall. They brought in Justin Herbert is probably why. He's not even superstar X Factor, but some really good players on that team. Man, this is going to be a tough game to win. I can't tell if it's frozen or not. It looked frozen. It's not, thankfully. Also, funny to see Herbert wearing number 10. They really need to program into the game that you can't use retired numbers. We would avoid all of this disaster that we see consistently, but we're up 7-0. Make it 10-0 to start defense playing fairly well. Has only allowed a field goal to Justin Herbert, and our offense has continued to play really well. Straight field goals for the Giants right now into the second half, and they have 11 points. They get a safety? I don't know. It's 23-18 now. Very bizarre score, and the Giants actually have the football and are threatening to take the lead. We're going to jump in. User Isaiah Simmons, Buda Baker, Miles Murphy needs to get to the quarterback. Justin Herbert basically looking like Eli Manning. That's got to be a pick. Okay, that's wild. Start playing like Eli Manning, please. Or at least on the, on the tail end. Eli had some great stretches. Appreciate him as a Giants fan. Uh, but also had some bad stretches. I want to say he was against the Niners. He may have thrown five interceptions in that game. I think it was at least four. It was a ridiculous number. It was me and Madden franchise type of shit. But we're looking to avoid that. In this game, if we get back on offense, if we keep Herbert out of the end zone, I like our chances to win the game. Because you'd almost expect that it's four down territory no matter what here. You don't settle for a field goal under two minutes to play. Even with three timeouts, you don't settle for a field goal in this spot. We've seen some teams do it. It's insane. You're really banking on your defense to come up clutch. Is it really not worth it to go for it on fourth down in that spot? Insanity. And the Giants will be faced with that decision, and they will, in my opinion, wisely go for it. We're going to go cover two. Tampa two, so we're responsible for really the deep middle of the field if anything goes there. But it's not super deep. Not super deep. They're going end zone, and good defense. Pass broken up. Incomplete by Trayvon Mullen. And a first down could end it. In fact, probably will. But this really has to be three straight runs. Get their timeouts off the board. And then if we have to punt them back the ball, whatever. They have less time to work with. We don't want to give them an extra timeout. I think we're going to run the ball again on third and six. I know that's a conservative decision. 
but it's what we're gonna do. And I love to run against uh, double A gap looks. I really do. I, I wish I could just change this, but it's not the function of the play. If I change it again, it's gonna be a false start. We're just gonna run at it. And Aaron Jones breaks the tackle, he's fighting. Final timeout call by the Giants, but we got the first down. That is the game. Game over. We are moving on. That was a little bit dicey. Great effort from Aaron Jones. And uh, they need a, a forced fumble, but they're not going to get it because we're going to need. We are going to knee out the clock. Kneel it out. I don't have it in a... Don't have it in shoe clock. It's probably a problem. I didn't wait. <laughs> it's just going to cost me an extra few seconds of waiting because we don't have to snap the ball again, but I know on fourth down, they do not chew clock for whatever reason. I have it on. I don't know why I would not, wouldn't have it on or wouldn't want it to do it when I have it on. Why would they make me wait? It's dumb. But we're just not gonna snap the ball, obviously. We're moving on though. Divisional matchup. Shouldn't be playing anybody in our division, but we'll see who it is. It's gonna be the Commanders. They're an 85 overall. Obviously really, really good as well. I imagine their defensive line is going to stay together. Or at least they have Jonathan Allen and Jalen Waddle. Okay, that's, that's who paid Jalen Waddle. Well, it's a pretty dangerous receiver combo. Scary Terry and Jalen Waddle. That might be tough to stop. But at least we have home field advantage, which I guess for the Cardinals is not actually home field advantage. They've won just three games, I want to say, in the last two years at home. Disgusting. I mean, that is about as bad as you could possibly be. It's probably the worst in the NFL. And we are down by 10 here at home. We need to find the end zone. Start of the fourth quarter. I'm jumping in here on offense. Oh, we have to drive the length of the field. We've turned over the ball twice. I don't want to just go out on a loss, though. <laughs> Trey McBride. It's a nice catch. Kyler Murray, two picks. All right. You'd think I was playing, but you saw it. I was simulating. It's not my fault. It can't be my fault. We're just going to try and take over and do what we can. So we're going to scramble with Murray. Give me a block, Nuke. Oh, Kyler Murray fast as hell. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That was crazy. That's just me running around like a chicken with its head cut off, which is kind of the way Kyler Murray plays a quarterback position at times. Super exciting to watch. And that just worked out. Awesome throw on the run. And that should be a touchdown. Hit him, Murray. Hit him! Murray, ball get out a little bit late, and uh, Hollywood Brown could not get the feet down. Game far from over, though. Just need one big play. We're going to go to McBride. He's got it. Trey McBride, nice catch. Threw contact at the end there as well. Love to see it. And we're going to jump in on defense, see if we can't get a stop. Here we go. Bryce Young is their quarterback. That's right. And Kareem Hunt is just going through everybody. He might have the superstar ability that does not allow you to hit stick him. Because I feel like we just should have been able to knock him clean to the ground on that. And he shook off like two hit sticks. Which I don't know how you stop them for a loss without the hit stick. The cut stick, they'll fall forward. I don't know. Keep it. Get sacked. Ball came out. It's recovered by Miles Murphy. Former top 10 pick hero. Moving on. Not necessarily. There's a lot of game left. But Miles Murphy has scooped it and has scored it. Fumble recovery for a touchdown. Miles Murphy. 51 got in there. Who is 51? Is that the uh, linebacker we drafted? You know, I'm not sure. It's a great play. Yeah, 51, we can see it. His jersey, Turner. Turner with the big, big play to potentially put us onto the conference championship. What a momentum shifter. They actually have third and 18. Bryce Young got sacked. Can we see who did it? We'll probably check the uh, stats after this. Do we want to blitz Bryce Young? Probably not. It's just a little bit too risky at this juncture. But down he goes again. It's Knighton for the third time. Knighton has three sacks. We have seven total. Oh my goodness. Talk about a playoff performance. Three sacks? What a monster. Wearing that single digit number proudly and it's fourth and 23. And that is not gonna do it. It's intercepted by Byron Murphy. 
Curtis Samuel in pursuit. We have Knighton out in front throwing a block that ends up resulting in a touchdown. Back-to-back -to -back defensive touchdowns by this defense. We're moving on. Now it's official. Commanders actually made it a game scoring 26. But Murray, despite the two interception performance, throws for over 300 yards. Not much of a rushing game. But defensively, I mean, Carlos Knighton had four sacks. Four sacks. Jonathan Allen, two for the other side. Miles Murphy with one and a half is good. Chris Turner with one and a half is good. Zach Allen had a sack. Interception, of course, for Byron Murphy, which really sealed the deal. Turner with that forced fumble recovered by Murphy, who scored a touchdown. Two touchdowns for Murphy in this game. But, man, Knighton, whew, that is a performance for the ages. Miles Murphy with an upgrade. Let's do power rusher. If we can really have a dominant edge rush duo, we will be unstoppable. We don't get power moves, but it's already really high at a 93 to be fair. So I guess we really didn't even need it. You're telling me the Lions have made it to the conference championship? They're at 84 overall. They drafted Christian Gonzalez this past year. I can see that happening in real life. It's a possibility. And I wonder if they drafted CJ Stroud. Can we find out here? They have Tua. Tua Tungabailoa and Darnell Washington. Okay. Let's see. They drafted Darnell Washington probably in the second round. And they're actually up 14-0 right now. That's really not very good. And we only come away with three. We had a couple big plays on that drive. You can see these long blue plays um, are huge. But we have not been able to score a touchdown. And again, it's just a field goal. A 10-yard penalty on the offense there is a killer. And we have to... Settle for yet another field goal. But something big happened. Something big happened. 92-yard rush for Aaron Jones. Touchdown gives us the lead. And the Lions take it back swiftly. No pun intended, but it's 20-18. to 18. Anybody's game here. Third and 10. I'm jumping in. Two-minute offense. Do we do what I've been doing, which is just, just streak? Trey McBride and kind of read the linebackers. We're going to throw. That can't be intercepted. That just can't be. That just can't be intercepted. I just don't understand how he could possibly get in position. They do get bumped there. But how does Kirby Joseph intercept this ball? Oh, uh, you know why? Because we got a shit animation. Where Hopkins, you'll see it, slows down and gets out of position. So where in real life he would shield with his body, you can see the moment he slows down. Right there. Right there. Slows down to get out of position. Ooh, I gotta catch it as far away from my body as possible. It's stupid. It's stupid. These animations are so dumb. Now we really need a miracle. Fourth and five. This is convertible. But it really it doesn't put us in a good spot. We do have two timeouts, so we kind of need to score within the next, like, two seconds to not need an onside kick. And I guess that's possible. Mm, yeah, just don't fucking throw it. Yeah, cool. Oh, he burned him. He burned him. Tell me he burned him. Oh my goodness. What a play. What a play. We still need the onside kick, but we're not technically out of this. That would have been insane. Third and goal. That's got to be a touchdown. There we go. It's not looking good for us at all. But if we get the onside, hey, who knows? Miracles do happen. All right, moment of truth. Is there any chance we get this? Oh my God, I, I kicked the perfect onside kick. We have the ball. Oh my goodness. There's life. A field goal wins us the game. We have a timeout. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. We need to get to like the 40. I'm so tempted to just, ah, let's throw it away. Like, is that intentional grounding? That'd be tough. Oh my god, we got roughing the passer. What is what are they doing? <laughs> what are they doing? That is the absolute worst time for roughing the passer I've ever seen. 32 yarder to win it. Kick is up and drilled. We are moving on to the Super Bowl in the most unlikely of ways. What a crazy finish here in Arizona. You'll never see anything like that from me again. No way. All right, Super Bowl, Tennessee. 
Tennessee Titans. Okay. They are only an 82 overall. They drafted Brian Brzee. They already have Jeffrey Simmons. That's a pretty potent interior. Derrick Henry as well, still with the Titans. Man, there's something so cold and like pale and lifeless about this field. Really don't like it. We're in Atlanta, Mercedes-Benz, and we have the lead here in the Super Bowl. We lost it in a hurry, though. It's 24-14. We need some points, and we got some. It's a fourth quarter. We're down by a touchdown. It's fourth and one, and I'm jumping in on offense. Ah, dude, I know this is like the best defensive line we're likely to see. I do want to run the ball, though. Tell you what, we might. We might. We're going to go actually two ends, Aaron Jones, and out. Hopkins, you got to catch that. Thank God. That was not good. That was not good. I really wanted to scramble. I just want to scramble with uh, with Kyler Murray. Like, I have the ability to. He's so fast. Why would I not take advantage of that? Especially if they want to come out in man coverage. You know, take advantage of that weakness. If you run out in man coverage, guess who's not covering the quarterback? Anybody, usually. Oh, that's a big hole. Don't really want to score a touchdown just yet, though. I don't want to give the Titans time. That's my big thing right now. No time. Okay. That was almost pretty bad, but this is going exactly to plan right now. Two-minute warning. It's going to be back-to-back -back QB sneaks. I'll tell you that. We average 1.7 yards per play call on this, and there's nobody playing zero technique, so it should be free. And it is. First down. A little bit of a stronger look here. We're going to go QB sneak again, though. Murray dives right through. I really feel like we could do this three times in a row and score a touchdown. Who's going to stop us? Who's going to stop us? Not this team. Third and goal. QB sneak. That's a pretty strong play, huh? I don't hate the play or hate the game. Two-point conversion. We're going for the win. Here we go. For the Super Bowl. Jones fights in, gets it. Two point is good. We take the lead by one point with 10 seconds to play. Please return this. Please return this. Okay, this is time off the clock. And it's going to be worse field positioning. Seven seconds. I don't think there's any way they can get to midfield here and call a timeout. Like, in real life, yeah, you could. I don't think they could in this scenario. And it may, in real life, it'd be really tough, too, because you have one play to get into field goal range, and it has to take six seconds that pass is incomplete, and the Arizona Cardinals are Super Bowl champions. We shouldn't have even been here. It took an onside kick and a last-second field goal to even put us in this position. We never even should have made this game, yet here we did. We came back. We won. We went for two because I'm getting tired. I got to go to sleep. I can't deal with overtime. Tanner McKee was the Titans quarterback, and that is your video. Thank you so much for watching this Arizona Cardinals rebuild, and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy. Oh yeah, subscribe too, please. Hit the subscribe button if you're not already, and like the video. Thanks.